Lecture Eight: The Science Wisdom System. The past, present, and future of the development of the human science civilization. In this lecture, I'll tap into the core topic of this lecture series: science logic, or what I have called the science wisdom system. All the systems I have talked about in our human world are descriptions of different wisdom systems. Each description has its own complete logic system and is self-consistent. The science wisdom system is a complete logic system whose origins date back to early human history. It describes the existence of the three-dimensional world and the connections among all things in it. Human beings have been trying to provide a complete description of all the things themselves too. With the development of science, we have gradually come to an understanding that there are many unknown things about the world that are beyond our exploration. In other words, the way of thinking that is science logic is limited to practical activities in our three-dimensional world, with the eyes, ear, tongue, and body as exploring utilities, and this is how the system of science wisdom have been established. Through these methods, we have a better and objective understanding of the world. Now, let me give a summary of the past, present, and future of the development of human science civilization. Let us begin by revisiting the logic framework of the entire system, which enables us to understand the connection between our intellectual system and other systems, and to explore the possibility of the limitless extension of its self-consistency. The first concept of reality to explore in this framework is the concept of space. The concept of linear geometry was used to explain the universe from the zeroth dimension to the nth dimension (parentheses) and approaches infinity (parentheses). The concept of space is used to completely dissect the entire universe and to strictly describe its logical relationships. In other words, space is big with no bigger space on the outside. And it is also small yet, with no smaller space inside. The second concept of our framework, reality, derives directly from our explorations of the wisdoms in space, the method of finding the commonality among all wisdoms. Through this method, we know that the commonality among all existence is molecules. In other words, it is molecules that form matter. To explore further, the commonality among molecules is an atom, as atoms form a molecule. An atom is composed of a nucleus and one or more electrons. Nuclei differ, but all electrons are the same. A nucleus is composed of one or more protons and a number of neutrons, which is a commonality. A proton is composed of neutrons and positrons (parentheses, positive electrons (parentheses). After going through such analysis, we come to an understanding that there are only three basic matters: neutron, positron, and negative electron, all of which are referred to as elementary particles. The commonality among these three particles is their quantum property. The quantum property is the wave-particle duality. The commonality of the wave-particle duality is the energy wave. When the wave forms, the interferometric imaging of a standing wave in space, we can see its existence. This is called the particle nature. Those parts that did not form any images kept their wave nature and formed relevant information on the consciousness. Therefore, wave nature is the commonality of all existence in the entire three-dimensional world. In reality, there are many different kinds of waves. The Fourier equation tells us that. All energy waves can be described by means of stacking sine waves, 
In other words, all things can eventually be described in the form of sine waves. Therefore, the sine wave is the most elementary existent in all the descriptions of our logic system, which means the most elementary existence in our universe is the sine wave. The stacking of sine waves is the basis of all existence in our world. When analyzing sine waves in our three-dimensional world, the focus has been on the amplitude and the frequency, but another very important element has been neglected. When we combine one or more element space, we find that the dimension of the energy wave is much more important than the amplitude and the frequency. The relationship between different energies in different dimensions is the relation of projection source and projected images. Therefore, the n-dimensional space (parentheses) n approaches infinity (parentheses) is the projection source of all things in the universe. With the understanding of this projection relationship. We understand the relationship of energy distribution in the entire universe, i.e., the relationship of the projection of energy waves. In the transmission of energy waves, we've learned another concept: that any one mass point in the universe contains all information in the universe and all connections among all information. In other words. Each energy wave would go through this mass point, even though this point might not only be small, but have no smaller particles on the inside. This is the law of cosmic holography. Buddha Sakyamuni said, "All sentient beings have the innate wisdom of the Tathagata, and each being is intrinsically self-sufficient." When a Taoist says. Tao is present all the time in all places. They mean the same. And when a Christian says the same about God, this is the core of their wisdom. Using this core information, we are able to find that there is a connection in all the wisdom systems. When we search for the commonality amongst the differences of all wisdom systems, we can see that. They are highly consistent in their teachings and can verify each other at a very high level. Today, even with the accelerating evolution of science and technology in our world, most widely scientific descriptions are widely seen to be rooted in the three-dimensional world, especially on authoritative issues. Where principles have been established based on practices in the three-dimensional world, these principles, after being recognized, established, and tested, are all true. As practice is the sole criteria in testing truth, however, three-dimensional truth can only be tested by rules and principles in the three-dimensional world. When examining things in the higher dimensional world, it is a logical error to use such principles. Do higher dimensional worlds exist? All the wisdom systems we have encountered so far are revealing to us that, apart from the world in which we are living, there are other higher dimensional worlds. In those higher dimensions, there would definitely be other forms of descriptions. And there are many, many things that are beyond the scope of so-called modern science in our world. When we are open to such a thought, and when we expand the science domain from the three-dimensional world to the n-dimensional space, and we look back at the connections among all wisdom systems, we find that they could verify each other. Such verifications would make it easier for us to better understand the entire universe, and to thoroughly understand and comprehensively approve all the wisdom systems. One, the accumulation and passing down of human knowledge, the limitation and passing down of three-dimensional practices. We, 
as human beings, have always held a view that today's knowledge system and the science and technology system are a result of many years of accumulation. Is the knowledge correct? It is, of course, in our three-dimensional world. It has been recognized, tested, and eventually established as the formal knowledge system underlying all human science. Each invention has gone through a lot of facts and experiments. Such is the process of accumulation. However, what exactly is knowledge and perception? Where do they come from? For most people, statistics and accumulated knowledge are of great value, as they come from real practice and original creativity. Yet, where did the original thought come from? That drove all these practices. What are the driving forces of all these originalities? From the relationship between projection source and projected images, we understand all creations come from spiritual inspiration. The word spirit could be understood as a higher dimension. The spirit or soul is high dimensional energy. Spiritual inspirations come from information in the high dimensional world. This thought is itself inspiring. Initial thoughts of all scientific experiments come from the high dimensional realm within. Inspiration drove all the tests and experiments, which, with further statistics, eventually led to the establishment of knowledge. There is another scenario. People of high dimensional abilities were able to download information from the high dimensional world, and created a wisdom system, which was then disseminated and propagated. During the process of propagation, those who had the ability to download the high dimensional information did not merely pass on the knowledge or information. They were able to integrate the knowledge and wisdom. Let me give you an example. We can project a three-dimensional image of a mountain onto a two-dimensional plane, in the form of contour lines. These lines are the so-called knowledge. The actual mountain is the source and is the wisdom. A teacher who teaches his students to search for the mountain is a teacher that is conveying the Tao. Those who teach the contour lines are teaching knowledge, but those who impart the relationship between the contour lines and the mountain are both teaching knowledge and resolving confusion. Thus, a teacher who seeks to convey the Tao, impart knowledge, and resolve confusion will explain the high dimensional information through the two dimensional descriptions. Thereby inspiring his students to understand high-dimensional wisdom, the two-dimensional descriptions are but a tool to explain the relationship between the two and three-dimensional world. Knowledge has been used as yeast, a stimulant for inducing wisdom. However, what if a student had not established the ability to search for the mountain, and the teacher departs from the world? Leaving the student only the knowledge on the contour lines, then after becoming a teacher, this student could only teach the traditional contour lines in such a way. The small circles at the top of a mountain, the largest one at the bottom ring of a mountain, where the lines are closed, that's an indication of a cliff. Where the lines are widely apart. That's an indication of a gentle slope. However, expertly, this teacher could read and explain the contour lines to his students, trying to explain what a mountain was. He was actually not describing the real mountain. He could only be describing some lines on a two-dimensional plane. In other words, he had imported knowledge only. Furthermore. What this teacher had taught might not have been the absolute truth. When a student learns the so-called contour lines, he cannot go further and research the mountain. 
This is the limitation we are facing. This limitation of understanding hinders the perception of the entire universe. What is the biggest obstacle in the perception of our three-dimensional world? It is the limitation of the three-dimensional world and knowledge. In the three-dimensional world, there are only length, width, and height, with time being the constant element. However, as Einstein has told us, when the speed of an object approaches the speed of light, time becomes a variant element. Understand this circumstance. The fourth dimension emerges, and none of the four elements could be definite. Time, the fourth element, which is important in the three-dimensional space, becomes unimportant. Clinging to a three-dimensional world understanding, unable to comprehend that time is a variant element. Is the biggest obstacle to our perception in the three-dimensional world, especially with respect to the most extreme ranges of the micro and macro world. Our understanding of the micro world is limited by the inability to further divide time. Under such limited fragmentation of time, we are not able to describe the movements. Namely, the electron cloud in the micro world. So too, due to the fact that we do not have enough measurement facility for gigantic things (parentheses approaching infinity parentheses), we cannot provide a proper description of the macro world, as things that happened a hundred light years ago are not relevant to us. What happens a hundred light years away at the time of our birth will not have reached us by the time of our death. This is why the biggest obstacle to perception in our three-dimensional world is the perception that time is a constant element. This topic has been discussed in the Diamond Sutra, where it reads, "Neither the past, the present, nor the future mind can be found." This is because the past, the present, and the future are all forms of time. When we are restricted in perception, time is a constant element, and there is a distinction of such different time forms. How then could we manage to be connected to the higher dimensional world, the current moment? When we are truly living in the current moment, we would be connected to the nth dimension. Parenthesis and approaches infinity. Parenthesis. The form of a life mentioned in the Diamond Sutra is also the form of time. Only when we surpass such forms would we be able to enter the high dimensions. However, due to strong and stubborn belief, human beings limit their understanding to the three-dimensional world, and as a result. We have a wrong understanding of life and death. The fear of death makes human beings uncertain of their soul after they die. Such limitation in the three-dimensional world spurs us to accumulate more knowledge and to strive for more prosperity. How do these help to improve the meaning of life? In fact, they become the biggest obstacle, as mentioned before. We cannot grasp. All the information that is in the entirety of the three-dimensional world, because we are only focusing on this single dimension, we are not paying attention to any point outside this dimension. Such perception truly hinders the development of our logical thinking. In the two-dimensional world, although we are able to include points other than those that are on one line. We are still not able to grasp all the information in the entire two-dimensional world, as it is immeasurable. In the three-dimensional world, there are far more possibilities, enabling us to create immeasurable knowledge and complex information, and thereby create real prosperity for our lives. All scientific knowledge. Is the result of the stacking of information, the stacking of energy relationships of existence. 
when these energies are presented in different forms in the three-dimensional world, the reproduction of information makes the three-dimensional world even more complex. However, it is this complexity that hinders our connection with the higher dimensional world. Why then must we try and achieve a higher dimension? This is a very simple concept. In the single-dimensional world, there's no beauty to mention. In the two-dimensional world, a picture is endless times more beautiful than the line, which is the entire single-dimensional world. In the same way, a three-dimensional object is endless times more beautiful than a picture in a two-dimensional world. In short, we can understand that with the increase of one dimension, there are endless times more beauty and one more level of freedom. Such freedom could lift us to both a great joy and a great relaxation. The energy in the higher dimension is the projection source of the images projected in the lower dimension. Therefore, in a higher dimensional world, we'd have a better control of life. The lift and improvement of the level of freedom in consciousness energy is the sole purpose of life. With the above-mentioned backdrop, all information and prosperity in the lower dimensions become insignificant. Therefore, if we were to cling to the limitation of perception in the three-dimensional world, our improvement would be hindered and we would not be able to achieve intrinsically perfect wisdom. Up to now, all the advancements in science and technology in our world, when compared with the wisdoms in the higher dimensions, seem very limited. Why? Even though there are endless lines in a two-dimensional plane, even though there are endless planes in a three-dimensional world, there are endless cubes in the four-dimensional world. No matter how much information or how great the prosperity in the three-dimensional world, when compared with the fourth-dimensional world, the comparison is one versus infinity. The same applies to the comparison with the fifth. In other words, the achievements and knowledge in the three-dimensional world could be considered trivial when compared with the entire universe. If we were to cling to the limited perception of knowledge in the three-dimensional world, we'd hinder our own improvement in understanding the entire universe. When we understand this point, we understand the most fundamental insight. Any one mass point in the universe contains all the information in the universe, as well as the connections among all information. Through this, we know that each person in the universe is intrinsically self-sufficient, containing all information in the universe and the connections among all information. In fact, each person is in high consistency with the nth dimensional universe, parenthesis, and approaches infinity, parenthesis, and is intrinsically self-sufficient with respect to all possibilities. Given the above-mentioned conditions, why are we not able to live in a situation which realizes a complete and intrinsically self-sufficient life status? It is because of our limited and restricted perceptions. Our level of understanding and perception confines us to that level of life status. When we are restricted to three-dimensional thinking, we are restricted to living in the three-dimensional world. Those who are living in the three-dimensional world yet are able to travel between different dimensions and make connections between them, are able to implement and carry out the essence of the higher dimensions in the three-dimensional world. Such interdimensional adepts are referred to as the internal sage, external king in traditional Chinese culture. 
from the above descriptions, it would not be difficult for us to understand that. However much the development of science and technology brings improvement and growth, such improvement and growth can hinder our capacity to transcend the three-dimensional world by increasingly restricting our perceptions. When one lives in the three-dimensional world, one can still use its limited knowledge to awaken the limitless wisdom within oneself. By using the knowledge as yeast, or an enzyme to grow and to expand internal wisdom, one could be awakened to one's own wisdom. It all depends on how one treats this knowledge. To look up from a lower position, and regard knowledge as the dominion, or to look down from a higher position, or from the same level. And use knowledge as a tool that could inspire wisdom. The former would make you a slave of knowledge, while the latter would enable you to control and create new knowledge. We human beings have endless creativity because we are all intrinsically self-sufficient, and there is no reason that we should become a slave to knowledge. At this stage of development in our society, we are able to store nearly all information in the cloud. In other words, if we want to acquire knowledge, we could get from cloud storage whatever is needed for our purpose. As we increase the functions and capabilities of robots, and the robots are connected to the cloud storage. It could be disastrous for us if the majority of human beings are not able to be connected with the cloud and make use of the knowledge available there. They could become slaves to the robots. Such results have already been predicted by Western scientists. Robots today, which are supported by knowledge available from the cloud. Already have an intelligence that is equivalent to a three-year-old. What is there to stop robbers from surpassing human beings in their grasp of knowledge in the not too distant future? There is good news, however, in that we human beings have entered a new era, an era which initiates a progression from the three-dimensional world. To the higher dimensional spaces, in other words, the majority of people on Earth are seeking growth in spirituality, that is, an improvement in the perception of higher dimensions. Such perception is categorically higher than that in the cloud. Spiritually based science, which surpasses current science, is called universal point technology. Universal point points to the nth dimension (parenthesis) and approaches infinity (parenthesis). Through internal cultivation and practice, one can return to one's inner wisdom, which would be categorically higher than that in the cloud. One would be able to control the universe, namely time and space, if we were to only dwell in three-dimensional knowledge. Would be left far behind, as all things in the three-dimensional world are showing signs of destruction and decay. All natural and man-made disasters are warning us, urging us to embrace the need to break away from the three-dimensional world and seek the higher dimensions. Accessing such higher knowledge would clear the fear of the formation. Existence, destruction, emptiness of all things in the three-dimensional world. Why? In the higher-dimensional world, we are intrinsically self-sufficient in all possibilities. But if we don't lift the three-dimensional perception to a higher dimension, we remain fearful. Currently, all businesses, careers, all life situations. Pollution, the economy, wars, are sources of fear and emotional entanglement. 
However, we can lift ourselves from this situation by realizing all these decaying signs as warnings to us to improve our level of wisdom. Two, the two forces for development in human civilization: the pursuit of eternity and the fulfilling of desires. Looking at the history of China, we can see that. Attachment to three-dimensional reproduction and development began in the time of the Zhou Dynasty. Before the Zhou Dynasty, the conduct of morality and etiquette was preconditioned by the goal of enlightenment. The former heavenly eight diagrams, the I Ching theory of time and space. Indicated enlightenment as the foundation for human beings. Eternity was the purpose of life at that time. From Zhou Yi, the Yi Jing of the Zhou Dynasty, we can see that people started to pursue a complexity brought forth by the energies in three-dimensional materials. When such complexity matched perfectly the internal consciousness energy. And created a harmony in the energies of consciousness and materials. A new set of rules was created, and it was called the etiquette of the Zhou. When the Zhou Dynasty collapsed, the spring and autumn period started, followed by the warning stage period. During such tumultuous times, Confucius saw the underlying problem. He realized that attachment to desire and greed in human beings was far greater than it was in the time of the Zhou Dynasty, and that people had gotten farther and farther away from enlightenment. At this time of disintegration, Confucius advocated the restoration of the etiquette of the Zhou in the hope that. All could return to following the rules of the game, and return to the pursuit of enlightenment. There are always two lines of development in humanity, and a horizontal reproduction and expansion. In the I Ching, the text of the trigram of Qian says, "Heaven is in motion ceaselessly. A noble person exerts himself constantly." Heaven's motion refers to the higher dimensions. A noble person's constant effort means that only through great effort can one enter the higher dimensions into the projection source. It is through internal improvement that one lifts his levels and becomes enlightened. The text of the trigram of Qun says. The earth is supportive of all. A noble person with great virtue bears the utmost. These two trigrams describe two directions of cultivation, vertical and horizontal. These two directions are the essence of all cultivation and improvement, with the vertical improvement being the ultimate purpose. In the classic texts. Which have been passed down to us by our ancestors, and also in other texts of wisdom in other cultures, we can see the two parts of wisdom: the implicit and the explicit. The implicit part is the part that inspires enlightenment, which is for our cultivation, our spiritual improvement, and internal progress. While the explicit part. Is the part that governs our conduct in a beneficial way, enabling us to live well, with great ease and dignity. To find the essence in all civilizations and wisdom systems is to be filled with dharma joy, because of the improvement and lift. We can also be fulfilled in the explicit. Life form in our society in the full and complete sense. The explicit and the implicit forms coexist in harmony and complement each other.
one is the projection source and the other is the projected image. The improvement in the source will enable higher and better images in the projections. Therefore, the improvement in the source is the fundamental improvement and the pursuit of eternity is the ultimate pursuit. What is the contradiction in reality? The desire for and attachment to the three-dimensional world. In other words, they attempt to retain the complexity of the three-dimensional world and they attempt to realize its so-called joy and happiness. This is a big misunderstanding, and the driving force behind this is desire. Desire is the feeling of lack. One is always thinking that he needs more. With such mentality, one would always be following the cycle of formation, existence, destruction, emptiness of all things in the three-dimensional world. How many times have the civilizations in our world been destroyed? Nemuria, Atlantis. Why? Because this is a normal rule of formation, existence, destruction, emptiness. All things formed must be unformed eventually. Destruction is the natural course. What does the latest destruction teach us? This should serve like a whip. An encouragement for us to improve to higher and higher levels of dimension and thereby assist the joint improvement of humanity. Without such mentality, we are in constant fear and anxiety in our life, like a burning inferno. In our traditional Chinese culture, the concept of the Tao follows the nature is a very important one. Nature is in full harmony with the Tao. What is the opposite of nature? Man-made. In the Chinese language, the word man combines with the word action slash make and forms the word fake, parenthesis, way, parenthesis, or false. All things in the three-dimensional world, no matter how complex, are images from the projection source in a higher dimension. If we cling to the projected images, we can't find the genuine connection between the images and the source. Therefore, with each invention in science and technology, there comes from heaven or the universe a warning. Such development and improvement is against the Tao, against nature. If we could try and understand it from this perspective, we would truly begin to consider. Should the direction of scientific development be towards technology, or should it be towards the true and comprehensive understanding, and even enlightenment, I think this should be the dominant direction of the development of human science and civilization. What is culture? Culture is the explicit representation of energy in the three-dimensional world. What is civilization? Civilization is the explicit representation of the level of achievement. It is explained in the saying, the way of the great learning is to illustrate industrious virtue. The civilization is the illustration of the level of perception. The perception is the projected images in a three-dimensional world of a source in the higher dimension. When we can enter a higher dimension, we can manifest a higher level of civilization. Currently, human beings regard the civilization of the three-dimensional world as a prosperous civilization. And I'd say this is a wrong perception. Our ancestors had told us long ago that the way of the great learning is to illustrate industrious virtue. We need to continuously improve the level of our dimension and strive towards the Tao all the time. 
we need to lift our level vertically to higher dimensions. Vertical improvement is no doubt a difficult path based on the universal point technology. But one of our technologies is a powerful tool to assist us. The ubiquitous internet technology has torn apart the boundary between the third dimension and the higher dimensions. The basis of development in internet technology is the speed of calculation of our computers, which exceeds the restricted and limited perception of time and space. And which enables the modeling of progress that is impossible to map in our current world. The current perception of space and time in our three-dimensional world has been broken through, but that is only a first step. Our progress in the comprehension of the speed of time hasn't done much for a breakthrough in dimensions. Most scientists. Have based their studies and research for the truth on three-dimensional thoughts, and their methodology is thus always on incorrect ground. The wisdom systems for the ancient are different. We tend to have a holographic view of the entire universe, and we search for the truth from the view from the top. Through such structure and perspective. We could build a true science and a true civilization for the future of human beings. Such science would include all information in the third dimension, all scientific theories and laws. At the same time, such science would include infinite space, and help pave the way for our consciousness to enter limitless civilization. Three. Transformation and transcendence of science, holistic and holographic universal views. The holistic universal view means the view that all things in the universe are integrated as one. This view enables us to see the one essential truth: all things happening in the universe are connected. In the reality of our three-dimensional world. Most people understand our world from a lower, restricted viewpoint, especially in recent times, when commercial civilization has made us attach too much importance to the value of things, resulting in a price tag for all things. We have completely been dominated by, and saturated in, the commercial mentality. Judging people even by their material assets. When we use this same principle on the world, economic development, the cumulative GDP of all countries, becomes our prime yardstick. But if we try to apply the same yardstick to the universe, we would be stuck, as we cannot put a price tag on the star, the Milky Way, or the galaxy. The construction of a universal view, by contrast, is to take heaven and man as one. We need the base of the universal view to establish our world view. The base of our world view to establish our life view, and only then establish our views on value. This is optimal universal energy link. For the projection source to determine the projected images. Seeking the higher dimensional source of projected images enables us to find the true meaning and purpose of life. To live out the true significance of life is to live out its truest happiness and joy, as well as its greatest glory and value. Now let's have a look at the law of holography of the universe. When we treat the entire universe as one entity, there is actually a pivot point, namely a mass point in the universe that contains all the information in the universe, as well as the connections among all information. This is the law of holography of the universe. 
and it contains the theory that the universe is big yet with no bigger space on the outside, and that the universe is also small yet with no smaller particles on the inside. It is the view of heaven and man integrated as one. And the Tao's presence at any time and in anywhere, forming the noumenon of life, in which the universe and we are integrated as one. All the presence in front of us is merely the illustration of our internal entanglement of universal energy. The projected images form all the images in the universe. From the single dimension to the nth dimension, parenthesis, n approaches infinity, parenthesis. The Buddhism wisdom is able to comprehensively illustrate these images, as the Surangama Sutra presents us with all the detailed descriptions and classifications, from which we could see the reason why human beings are human beings, and nature is nature. And all the connections whereby human consciousness has evolved to its current complexity. Therefore, the concept of energy enables us to find out what responding level one has achieved. This is called transformation and transcendence. With such a concept, one is able to integrate. All wisdoms in our world, without creating any conflicts among them, such integration could inspire greater interest in accessing innate wisdom. In other words, to open up to our intrinsically self-sufficient wisdom, let us not blindly follow any one method, or any one grand master, or any one collection of sayings. Let us be rather. In a state of intrinsic self-sufficiency, in which any methods, ways, theories, or wisdoms would be of assistance in our development and civilization, for a true practitioner, all things are integrated as one. The entire universe is one entity. It's only due to different levels of perception that we appear otherwise. The use of universal point technology is to inspire all mankind towards a status of integration and completeness, ensuring the fullest internal connection between the self and the current moment. All wisdoms belong to the current moment. The relaxedness, joy, and happiness of the current moment is truly meaningful in one's life. In this lecture, I have covered the past, present, and future of the scientific development of human beings. Eventually, all in the universe will be integrated as one, consistent with the essence of all religions. Therefore, there is no conflict between science and religion, and the development of science can lead to our enlightenment. But science does not just mean science in the three-dimensional world; it also means the scientific logic that reaches all the way to the nth dimension. This enables us to understand the link between all the human wisdom systems.